Okay, so I quickly want to cover one of the best setups of the week on NAS 100. You may have seen my video that I released a few days ago where I passed my funded futures account trading NAS 100. I trade all of the US indices um, and some of them are in play for me on certain days more than others. So NAS 100 gave a beautiful setup and I just want to do a bar by bar replay and talk through the setup, right? So for me, there are three steps before I take a trade. Everything starts off with the trade idea, right? There's some reason that the trade is in play. Number two, then I have the setup, right? And then number three, I have the actual trade execution. So I'm going to walk through all three here for you today. All right. So I first off, I want to start off from the daily perspective. The way that I form my bias is um, I first start off with fundamentals, like what's going on with stocks overall, right? So last week, this is when the Fed announced they weren't going to cut the rates, which wasn't expected anyway. But one thing that Fed Powell mentioned was that rate hikes weren't on the table. That was a big relief. The reason why is because a lot of the U.S. inflation data started to heat up again, right? So at the beginning of the year, we expected that rates would be cut. Like the majority of the market was thinking that expecting rates to be cut in March, right? And then the U.S. data started cutting coming out a hot and this inflation started to stall. Right. Uh, so this was uh, Wednesday. We had fireworks that day. And then we've we've been in a consistent rally. And then one of the things that I like to do is I like to, from a fundamental perspective, I look at the major members of NQ. I created a quick stock screener here where I use a trading view stock screener. Here I have a filter where I have all of the NQ stocks, right? And they're filtered by market cap, right? So I have all of the top and I watch those. I watch especially the Microsofts, the Apples, the NVIDIAs, the Googles, et cetera, right? Because those particular stocks themselves individually can cause the index to move. Okay. So what happened was on Monday, we blasted through, we were buying, we blasted through this strong level, right? It's a strong technical level. Tuesday we bought, but price didn't quite keep going up. So what happened is on Wednesday, pre-market, we saw this is the, the support level, support, main support of on Tuesday, right? So we had, we had buying um, and then price thawed out and settled. But pre-market, we saw price gap down to this level. Again, we have no news catalyst this day, right? So my best days are when I have news catalysts. Otherwise, I'm looking at a combination of price action, levels, and volume, right? To tell me the story or to give me indication that I'm going to enter, right? So this play was purely based on strong technical levels, a strong setup, strong volume, and you know the major stocks, we didn't have any earnings for them, and they were pretty much up for that day, right? So pre-market, we started to gap down into this level. Now, this is a level of interest for me. And you may wonder, like, how do I know once price pulls into the level, uh, when to execute? So it's all about timing as well, okay? So... What I do is I have my larger level. It's a larger daily level uh, that I mark up. And then I'll I'll drop down to the 30 minute or so and I'll mark up tighter levels here, right? So tighter levels, potential levels that a price can react to from the 30 minute time frame. So these act as uh, smaller levels that price can potentially land on and uh, we can be trading around those levels, right? So this was a resistance level here that price gap down from. Okay, so we see price pulls down into this level and creates a tight range. Okay. So this is all pre-market. So this tight range is created. So price pulls, it gaps down pre-market and then it starts to range. So this is a bread and butter setup for me. When I see price starts to range, this range for about, about an hour really, uh, before the market open. So price is ranging, volume is low. So what I'm looking for is price to a potentially break out of this range for continuation lower, or, uh, you have something called the gap and go, right? Uh, this is a classic setup. Price may gap down pre-market, uh, moves away from VWAP, and then price settles here, and then we get a pop back up, right? So that's what I was looking out for as well. So I had two scenarios before the market opened, right? So I, before I did anything, before I positioned myself, I wanted to see uh, aggressive selling here or aggressive buying. Uh, I favored the buys because fundamentals were bullish. The technicals were bullish, right? Look at the daily time frame. Uh, we were bullish. So what happens is at the opening candle, 830 candle, we have a bullish push just above this range, another bullish candle. And at that, those two bullish candles, the relative volume, I'm watching relative volume, but the volume here that we see the volume bars are elevated, right? So strong push, letting us know that there's more participation. And then these two bearish candles coming back to the range, the volume is decreasing. So I'm looking at level two, I'm looking at the tape as well. I won't walk through it right now, but let me know in the comment section if you want me to add that breakdown. So if we look at this just from the five minute perspective as well, we have price settles, starts to range here, and then we have a strong break showing aggressive buying, retest, 
and then uh, we can form an entry. What I've started to do is I enter from the one minute mainly. I use volume. I have a nice setup, clean setup on the one minute. As long as I have volume in my favor, I'll enter from that one minute, right? Here, what I'm looking for is a break of the range. So if in the beginning, I would always put my stop loss below that five minute. Uh, now, if I have volume, especially days when I have a news catalyst, we didn't have a news catalyst today, but the volume came in pretty strong and, and settled, right? So we have strong, tight range, price breaks up, elevated volume, breaking out of that range at the open, price comes down, uh, settles here. We have bullish candle, another bullish candle. Volume is is, um, is consistent, right? So what I go ahead and do is I enter into a buy here. Now I have the nine EMA here as a signal for me. Uh, it's just a visual signal of, of trend on the lower time frame or, or whatever time frame that I'm trading. So price just, it immediately pushes, right? We have some rejection. I'm watching price closely. I'm watching the tape closely. And um, the next level that I'm, I'm looking for to you know potentially take profit or close the trade is, is two things. It's either, either I lose momentum and we start to cross back below that nine EMA or uh, we hit one of the significant levels. Uh, so this was yesterday's level. Price settled above on that level yesterday. So I was looking at this level um, as a potential target. Um, so pre-market, we saw you know price dropped, right? It gapped down. I'm, it's settled and then I'm looking for price to push back up and it just kept pushing aggressively. So sometimes you have the right volume, you catch a setup and it's pushing aggressively, just like in the My Funded Futures video, caught one of those on NAS 100. Um, so what I was looking for was uh, one of my reasons to close was for us to uh, momentum started to die out. And then when price started to uh, cross back under the nine EMA, that's when I took a uh, majority of my profits, right? Um, so I was looking for price to continue and move through this level. Price stalled out. I wasn't looking for looking to sell uh, because uh, when I look at the ADDQ, this is the advancing stocks versus the declining stocks, the green stocks uh, minus the red stocks. This is something I'll do a video on. As I'm looking for looking at the ADDQ, we stocks a gap down negative, but we see a constant rise here, constant rise as price is pushing on NAS 100, right? Um, so I'm not married to sales. I'm only married to sales if I have more conviction of selling if we're down here near the extremes, right? Fundamentals were bullish, higher time frame bullish, uh, then I am looking at uh, potentially get long again once we break through uh, that price. So took profit here. This level offers uh, opportunity for another entry, right? And then this level here where we see the turn is where price had reached and had issues the, the previous day, right? So this formed a resistance here. Price got back above. Price got above that level. Then it became support. So um, I have all these levels. I'd have all these levels as uh, marked up as as potential levels that could cause us issues, right? So any price between here, uh, this level could cause issues. But once we got above that level and we hold volume, we have the momentum, uh, then this offers another opportunity uh, for entry, right? So. Uh, this is a very clean setup. Once I see this tight range forming on the indices, on the one minute, very tight. Uh, and then at the open, I have strong momentum. This is a very clean, easy scalp that I take that is just, it's textbook. It doesn't happen every single day, but when it happens, I've trained my mind to see it. And uh, I've done a lot of reps uh, with this particular scalp. Now I shared this particular scalp in the group right before it happened. I shared it with the girl. I said, hey, I look, I'm looking for redemption scalp or intrafade, right? It's basically the one that we gap down hard, then we have consolidation, and then we have a push. So some of the Discord members caught that NAS 100 trade as well. If you like these bar by bar videos where I walk through some of the trades just in the middle of the week, drop a fire sign and give me some feedback. Let me know what you'd like me to cover a little bit more. When I say we're bullish fundamentally or bullish technically, uh, let me know if you'd like me to go into certain things uh, in greater detail and I'll start to drop these more often. If you wanna learn more about how I trade, how I get funded and how I get consistent payouts, there's a link in the bio to a free class Click the link in the bio to get more information. If you want to see my five tips on how to scalp successfully, watch this video.